enforcement you think right away of uh, Sheriff David Clark because as things started going crazy in America we started turning into the sheriff to make sense of what's going on in the inner city because you mean turning to the sheriff you didn't turn into him right? no I didn't I wish I could <laughs> he works for the America America County uh, uh, Milwaukee County in Wisconsin author of this brand new book cop under fire moving beyond hashtags of race crime and politics for a better America sheriff when the president was talking about law enforcement were your ears ringing uh, they always do, but we have a huge supporter now in the White House, Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, and he said early on uh, in his campaign that he was going to support the police, and he was unambiguous about it, where some of the other candidates were trying to split the baby, and they were, you know, dancing around the edges. He went all in, understanding that we're on the front lines of the, of the rule of law. Well, how big a difference is this president than the last one? It's like night and day. Uh, former President Obama was an echo, echo chamber for the, uh, the cop haters the anti-police rhetoric, and uh, it was very damaging to this profession. It was very damaging to the trust that is needed in a community between you know, us and, 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 and the people we serve. So uh, that's gone now. It's going to take some time. This stuff doesn't flip overnight. But uh, rest assured, we have a president who said we're going to have the resources. We're going to have all the support we need. And he's going to make sure that uh, his attorney general, Jeff Sessions, who I know personally, uh, is going to do everything that he can to support the police. See, what? With, with, with President Obama and with Eric Holder and Loretta Lynch, the cops were the bad guys and the criminals were made out to be victims. You guys had to be retrained. You, right, de-escalation, emphasis on, uh, you know, more dialogue as we're under attack, under assault. You know, assaults against law enforcement officers were up, deaths, were, again, uh, deaths uh, in the line of duty were up as well. And you had this inane idea about uh, we should de-escalate and, and engage in more dialogue. This stuff is crazy. Is your book, your new book is called, it came out on Tuesday, it's called Cop Under Fire, Moving Beyond Hashtags of Race, Crime and Politics for a Better America. Is it, is it a guide to the president? To, to t show him what needs to change, how we need to fix the problem? Well, I think he already knows. But what this is, is, you know, usually people only get the benefit of me in sound bites. I'm on TV, a little you're, radio. You're a good sound biter. Well, you know, there's, there's substance to what I say, though. And so this allows people right. a deeper dive into some of the things that I talk about. And I'll, talk, I'll touch on issues that many in, in a political environment would not go near. Race. Uh, things like the um, cultural dysfunctionality in the black community leading to the rise of a black underclass. Those are things most politicians just stay away from. But I'm trying to get people beyond and not to solve these things. Some of them, race is always going to be front and foremost in this country. we got to get beyond some of this and stuff. And, Sheriff, you know why you're qualified? It's because you know what you witnessed. Your dad was pushing you for a while, just needle you. Hey, you should try be a cop, right? And he said, well, I'm thinking about it. You drove a beer truck. You realized you couldn't do that for too much longer. So you tried this thing. <laughs> but would you give us a perspective in your book is what it's like walking the beat. And as you watched a middle class neighborhood with very little crime turn into a lower class neighborhood totally robbed of any industry and opportunity, and people started looking at the system and looking for handouts, and you watched the behavior of the human beings with so much potential change. I saw what the great society, Lyndon Johnson's uh, crazy idea of uh, big government, what it did to destroy the family structure in the black community. It, I think it hit the black community harder than anybody else. It marginalized men in the, in the, the, the lives of their family uh, to raise the kid to be the provider. Uncle Sam be t became the provider, you know, with, with welfare benefits. Uncle Sam put food on the table. Uncle Sam was the protector, so on and so forth. It's had devastating uh, consequences. Uncle Sam might be good for some things, but Uncle Sam is a horrible father. Well, uh, Uncle Sam, uh, you know, the service to our nation, a lot of people are wondering whether or not you would be interested in something like this. Here is Dog the Bounty Hunter on Fox and Friends this past weekend. Listen to this, Sheriff. Sheriff Clark, it's strong law and order. <clears throat> While the President of the United States is making America great again, we're trying to help Sheriff Clark to make it safe again. We want him to run for United States Senate. I think that the enthusiasm to have someone who's strong law and order come in to help us reclaim our country is a very exciting possibility. Okay, you had uh, Dog the Bunny, Bounty Hunter at CPAC suggesting you would be a great candidate for U.S. Senate. Well, look, that's a big decision, and uh, it's a decision that requires time. Uh, before you make it. I'm flattered by the energy and the enthusiasm nationwide for such a thing, but that's why it's a draft movement at this point. They're going to have to get me in there kicking and screaming right now, but I never say never. I haven't totally closed the door, but uh, I think it's less than 50% sure. that I'd run for Senate. How interested are you in a, white, a move to the White House? I know you've already been to the Tower a couple of times. Uh, 
There are discussions. There are ongoing discussions. Look, if the president asks me to serve, I'm going to step up and I'm going to serve my country, serve his administration. Uh, if that call comes, I will answer that call. That's all I can say at this point. You know, uh, last uh, the big headline today is about uh, Jeff Sessions. Apparently, he talked to the Russian ambassador when he was a U.S. senator, and the Democrats are their hair is on fire. Uh, they kind of pulled the same thing on you last summer. Yeah, you know, I was uh, a year ago, December. I went on a law enforcement mission uh, to Moscow, and uh, someone came up with some tweet the other day that. Sheriff Clark met with Russian officials. Uh, he's got some explaining to do this stuff. Look, the average uh, voter doesn't care about this stuff. They're so far removed from all this nonsense. They want this government to get back to work to deal with the issues that, that uh, are facing America. So, you know, this is kind of the game in Washington that led to the rise of Donald Trump. They wanted an outsider. They brought him in. They said, uh, look, we need to change this, this tone to drain the swamp. That stuff's real with the American voters. So. Absolutely. Well, Sheriff, uh, thank you for being with us. The book is Caught Under Fire. Our law enforcement, unfortunately, has been under fire. But thank, thank you for you, bringing sir. this to all our, our attention and for being here this morning. You're very welcome. And congrats on being number one in uh, cable news. Thank you. Thank you all very right. much. For 10 years. 10 years. Right. All right. Wow. All right. Thanks, Sheriff. Thank you. Hey, Heather, how are you? I'm you doing promised good. to have more headlines. Have and you fulfilled that promise? Imagine that. Lots of things happening today. Uh, we begin with Senator Marco Rubio booted from his office, literally. Senator, I thought you were in Europe. What? I thought you were in Europe. I saw all these missing child posters all over town. Are you going to host a town hall? Now, the owner of the office space that